who's moving to Glendale, and what neighborhoods are they choosing? I'm Dave Robles with Think Real Estate, and I have lived in Glendale for about 20 years now. And you may not know this, but I grew up in Silver Lake. Yep, I grew up in the epicenter of cool before it was cool. Now, that doesn't mean I've ever been cool because that's simply not true. But I can tell you, about five or six years ago, I was holding an open house in Glendale, and in came several different parties of buyers, and they all had tattoos and earrings, and I'm thinking, you're not from around here, are you? And sure enough, these buyers lived in Highland Park, Silver Lake, and they were coming because they learned that Ross Moyne, the neighborhood we were in, had some really cool houses, and it was walkable to coffee. Yep, and that's when I saw the tides turning. And ever since then, I can tell you that buyers are discovering certain neighborhoods in Glendale in droves. And these buyers are coming from Los Feliz and Hancock Park and the west side of Los Angeles because they want to know what's so cool about Glendale. So I want to share with you a few neighborhoods that you should know about if you're thinking about looking into Glendale. Now, the first thing you need to know is that Glendale isn't a neighborhood. Glendale is actually a pretty big city. There's 200,000 people in the city of Glendale, and it's comprised of many different neighborhoods, like any big city. Some are great, some aren't, and I'm gonna share with you my favorites here today. The first neighborhood we're gonna talk about is in the south section of Glendale, and it's called Adams Hill. Now, Adams Hill is closer to Silver Lake and Eagle Rock, so it's a little bit of an easier transition if you're coming from those neighborhoods. What's cool about Adams Hill? Well, I love the views. They are smashing views of Glendale and looking out west. The other cool thing about Adams Hill, housing stock, plenty of really cool uh, old Spanish and old English homes. And one of the fun things about it is they named a lot of the streets after very prestigious colleges. So there's Dartmouth and Berkeley and Wellesley and Stanford and Yale. And it's kind of just a fun way that they went about naming the streets. Years ago, I sold an amazing 2,000 square foot mid-century modern right on Corona with smashing views. And it had a tree growing right through it. That house years ago, $430,000, just so you know probably worth a million seven today, easily. An average house in Adams Hill is just under a million dollars today, and they sell for about 6% over asking, and the hot ones are selling for about 12% over asking. The next neighborhood I wanna share with you is my home, Ross Moyne. Now, Ross Moyne, it's a pretty big neighborhood, and it's home to Glendale's largest historic district. 500 or so homes in the Ross Moyne Historic District, which really help preserve the look and feel of the neighborhood. Ross Moyne's also walking distance to Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Fish King, Weir Pouring, which is a great gastro pub. And it's a fantastic neighborhood if you're running, jogging, walking the dog. Right now, average house in Ross Moyne is selling for about a million five seventy-five, And those houses are going about an average of 6% over asking to as much as 18% over the asking price. The next neighborhood I wanna tell you about is two neighborhoods I'm gonna use as one, and it's Spar Heights and the Montrose area. One thing that makes Montrose and Spar Heights so special is Honolulu. Honolulu has about 200 shops and restaurants, making it a fantastic date night. And on the weekends, they have a farmer's market where you can go and do all your shopping right for the whole week. It's absolutely a great place to be. The average house in that neighborhood is running about a million dollars and average about 6% over asking and the hot houses up to 12% over asking. Another great thing about this neighborhood, fantastic schools. Now Glendale is known for having good schools, but they're not all good schools. Remember, it's a big city. 
But this area up here has incredible elementary, middle school, and high school. So you really can't go wrong if you're looking for schools in the Montrose and Spar Heights area. Just below Spar Heights is the Verdugo Woodlands. Now the Verdugo Woodlands is kind of between Oakmont Country Club down to Glendale City College. And on the west side, the Verdugo Mountains over to about Verdugo Boulevard on the east side. In this neighborhood, there's not a lot of restaurants or shops that you're gonna walk to, but there are a lot of parks, including Glendale's own skate park, which is super cool right at Verdugo Park. And it's also home to what is arguably one of Glendale's best elementary schools, which is Verdugo Woodlands Elementary School over on Verdugo. A home in this area is gonna set you back an average of a million four, and the average house is selling for about 5% over asking, and the really hot ones, about 13% over asking. Now, for all you urbanites, I wanna tell you about City Central. And this is kind of the downtown Glendale area, which honestly, and I'm being super honest here, years ago was my least favorite part of Glendale. Now, today, you've got not just the Galleria, but the Americana, and all the restaurants and shops on brand, including Porto's, now play a really important role in the flavor of the city of Glendale. So this area, city center, which is south of the 134 down to about Colorado and between Glendale Avenue on the east and Central Avenue on the west is becoming a prime location if you wanna be able to walk to everything in Glendale. Now there's not a lot of houses there, but there are a ton of condos and some multi-unit properties. So if you're looking to invest in that, this is where I suggest you look. The single family houses that are there sell for about a million dollars and the condos that are there sell for an average of $630,000. LA has Laurel Canyon, Glendale has Chevy Chase Canyon. Starts at Glen Oaks, goes all the way up close to La Cañada and along the way you're gonna pass some pretty cool Spanish mid-century, some architectural homes. You're gonna drive by the Chevy Chase Country Club and you're gonna go by a cool little restaurant called Wild Oak Cafe, which is a great little place to stop and get a burger for lunch. The average house up in Chevy Chase Canyon is about a million three, and those houses are selling at an average of about 2% below the asking price. So that's definitely different. The other canyon neighborhood is Glen Oaks Canyon, and this is on Glen Oaks Boulevard if you're traveling east past the two freeway. You get to a little neighborhood that has plenty of beautiful Spanish and English homes on really nice lots. My one complaint about Glen Oaks Canyon, really bad cell phone service. There's nothing you can do about it. I think you just got to accept that bad cell phone service is part of living in Glen Oaks Canyon. The average house in Glen Oaks sells for about a million four fifty, average about 5% over asking, and the good ones going for about 12% over asking price. Now I want to take you to the other side of Glendale, near Kenneth Village. It's called Cumberland Heights and El Miradero. Now these neighborhoods are next to each other. They're small and they are just below Brand Park, just north of Kenneth. And you can walk to great restaurants, coffee commissary. You can walk up to the park and go hiking. There's plenty of fields there. You're in a really outdoorsy neighborhood that is easy to walk to a lot of good stuff if you're in this little pocket. Houses there run for an average of a million four. They're also going about 5% over asking, and the good ones, up 17% over asking price. Plenty of beautiful housing stock, big lots, especially on Grandview. This is a neighborhood that should be on your list. Now, I don't wanna say I left the best for last, but I may have. Whiting Woods is our last neighborhood. It is absolutely magical. I still remember the first time I drove down Whiting Woods Road and saw the creek that runs through it, went under all the big oak trees, and saw these really cute little bridges that crossed the creek to, so people can get to their homes. Whiting Woods is spectacular. Whiting Woods is tiny. There's only 450 houses up there. A lot of them are mid-century ranch, but there's also several Neutra and Lautner homes that really make up the landscape. The average price is a million 425, 
selling for about 4% over asking, but the really hot ones going up to 16% over asking price. Now, because Whitey Woods is in North Glendale, it has access to the great schools in La Crescenta, Montrose, and Spar Heights area. So there you go. Now, those aren't all the neighborhoods in Glendale, but those are some that need to be on your list if you're considering making a move to Glendale. Give me a call if you'd like to talk about any of these or how a house in Glendale might work out for you. Thanks, and I'll talk to you soon.